It's crazy, you'd think that the black colorway of a shoe would be one of the first colorways to drop, but in the case of the Foam Runners, it took about two years. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm reviewing the Yeezy Foam Runner in the Onyx colorway. So over the years, I've been a huge proponent of the Yeezy Foam Runners. This shoe is awesome, and it actually took people about a year and a half to actually come around to this sneaker, and now it's become one of the most popular Yeezys ever. And like I said in the beginning of the video, it's crazy to me that it took almost two years, if not exactly two years, for a black or almost black Yeezy Foam Runner to drop. But I guess even though it took longer than I would have wanted for this colorway to come out, I'm just glad it's here. So the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner in the Onyx colorway officially releases worldwide on June 8th, 2022, with a slightly higher retail price of $90. I'm not sure if that retail price is the same across all the places that it's releasing, but at least on the Adidas Confirmed app, which is directly from Adidas, this shoe is priced at $90. Which I guess isn't that surprising because inflation is out of control right now and it just makes sense that Adidas is slightly raising their prices. Don't get me wrong, it sucks. A $10 increase is still crappy, but at the same time, it could be worse. And if you guys want to grab a pair of the Yeezy Foam Runners and Onyx because maybe you missed out on the release or maybe you just want to check the resale price of this shoe, I've made sure to leave an affiliate link to GOAT in the top of the description below. But before we dive any deeper into the shoe, let's first take a look at the box. And this box is pretty plain. In fact, it's your standard Yeezy Foam Runner box. Nothing really of note on the outside, just clean, basic cardboard. You've got a size tag. I grabbed a size 9, which is my true size. You've got the little GOAT sticker right down there at the bottom, which obviously wouldn't be there if you bought it from anywhere else. And then inside the box, you've got foam printed on the top of the lid and also runner or runner printed on the back of the inside. And actually, another detail that you might miss if you don't take out the paper inside the box you've got the size tag as if they took the box flipped it inside out and then that was the foam runner box so kind of an interesting look they've done this for every foam runner um, not sure exactly why they do it that way but I don't hate it. But getting into the shoes themselves, the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner in the Onyx colorway is essentially a black Yeezy Foam Runner, except in reality, it's not exactly black. It's more of sort of a washed out, very dark gray. And I don't know if you've noticed, but over the last couple months, Kanye has been wearing increasingly more black. In fact, at this point, he's pretty much just wearing all black all the time. And he's also wearing those like Balenciaga Croc boot things, which I don't think anyone likes except for Kanye. I bet they're gonna be hyped now though, because he wore them. It's crazy the things that hype beasts do because Kanye wears something. I get it, but at the same time, it's stupid. So while yes, in some ways, it is a little frustrating that it took two years for a black foam runner to come out, the timing does kind of make sense. So if you've been following Kanye West and his Yeezy releases, you probably already know that this shoe had an incredibly limited release at one of his listening parties. No one knows the exact number of pairs of the Onyx foam runners released at that event, but it was very, very limited, and up until recently, this shoe was reselling for like $1,000. Now you can pretty much buy a pair of these for like 150 to 180 bucks at least the night before the release of this sneaker, which leads me to believe that there probably are, or hopefully are, a good amount of pairs of these available. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I did pay up for my pair because I bought them through Instant Ship on Goat, which is slightly more expensive, but that means I am able to give you guys an early review. However, it's the night before the release, so it's not that early. That being said, I am still really excited to have this shoe, and as a Foam Runner fan, this colorway is definitely up there with like my top three favorite Foam Runners. I think this might be number two or number three. So diving a little bit deeper into this shoe, the entire shoe seems to come in one tone of onyx or very dark gray. But when you look a little bit closer at this shoe and look at it in actual daylight and not just in the lights in your house, you'll notice that it's not one solid color, but it actually does have a light mix of other shades of dark grays and blacks. I mean, to be fair, it's a very, very subtle mix. It's barely noticeable, but it's there nonetheless. And what's interesting about that is that this shoe was actually made in China. In fact, it says it right there on the ankle collar of the shoe. And the reason that's interesting is because that's where Adidas and Yeezy make their mixed versions of the foam runners. All the solid color foam runners are made in the United States. I'm assuming it has to do with production costs or production capabilities. I'm not sure exactly which one of those it is, but for whatever reason, all the mixed versions of these shoes are made in China and all the solid colors like the Ararats are made in the United States. That being said, the actual physical differences between the made in the US pairs and the made in China pairs is negligible. In fact, there's really not much to differentiate these two shoes other than the, uh, I guess the slight textural difference that is very, very hard to notice, and also the color difference. Other than that, they feel exactly the same, and they fit very similarly. Now, to be completely honest, when I first heard about the Onyx and saw images of this shoe, I thought that it might be a black Yeezy foam runner, and that's what I was hoping for. But now seeing the shoe in person and seeing some of the updated promotional images for this shoe, this sort of dark gray color is actually really growing on me. I mean, the name of this colorway is a little bit misleading. Onyx is a very dark, dark color. This is a much lighter version of a dark 
dark gray or a black. I think the name charcoal or something like that would have been a more fitting name just because that's a little bit more of a darker gray. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, but just so you guys know, this is not a solid black. This is definitely more of a dark gray. As far as the actual construction of this foam runner, it's unchanged from any of the previous foam runners. You still have this very thick nose, which is actually great if you stub your toes a lot because you won't in this shoe there's just so much foam there at the tip you still have all the same ventilation holes on the top of the toe and along the side of the sneaker you still have that sort of hidden adidas three stripes in the midfoot of the shoe all of the little design details and the sort of sculpting of this sneaker i absolutely love i think the sneaker looks crazy i think it looks futuristic and especially in this onyx colorway this is one of the cleanest foam runners yet and if you wear this shoe with like dark colors or even if you do what i did and you wear it with dark apothecary socks best socks in the game if you guys want to check them out link in the description below and maybe a pair of light pants you can still get away with it. It's one of those colorways that just kind of fades into the background. It's not the most eye-catching piece, but that's what I love about it. If you're looking for a more laid-back look of the Easy Foam Runners, this is the way to go. Moving into the shoe, again, this shoe is unchanged from any of the previous foam runners. The ankle collar still feels the same. You've got that little parting line where the two molds separated on the shoe. Inside the sneaker, you still got that really nice sort of textured footbed area, which sort of feels like it's massaging your foot for like the first three minutes that you wear the shoe, and then you get used to it and don't notice it anymore. It's a very, very comfortable comfortable shoe on foot. As you guys can see, it's incredibly breathable because of all the perforation holes. The foam that they use on this sneaker is not only durable, which is surprising to me, but also very soft underfoot and also pretty soft around the top of your foot because it's the same foam. The one thing that I would recommend when it comes to wearing a pair of foam runners, if you've never worn a pair before, it's probably best to wear this shoe with a pair of socks. It doesn't have to be a pair of apothecary socks, it could be any pair of socks, but if you don't wear a pair of socks, the foam on the edges of the ankle collar can really rub against your skin and it can be a little irritating. And again, around the top of the heel, that can really rub against the back of your leg. As long as you're wearing socks, you should be good to go. Now as far as sizing and fit, unfortunately the Yeezy foam runners all kind of fit differently. A lot of the more recent releases of this shoe do tend to fit true to size. And the good news is with the Onyx colorway, they also fit relatively true to size. On Adidas's website, they say that they run small and that you should go up half a size. Unfortunately, the shoe does not come in half sizes. So for full size people like myself, I'm a size nine. You should go with your true size. It fits fine. I have no issues with it whatsoever. If you're a half size, I would recommend going up a half size. That's what Adidas recommends to do. And that's what I would recommend doing as well. Like I said, I grabbed the shoe true to size. I have no issues whatsoever. If you already have pairs of foam runners, especially recent foam runners, grab the same size that you usually grab and you should be good to go. Then continuing around to the back of the shoe, you've got that same Yeezy foam runner heel portion, which is swept upwards, which actually makes it really nice to drive in because you can sort of lean into the pedal. I love it. It's also very nicely padded around the heel. You've got a lot of cushion. It's very comfortable and it does offer a little bit of heel containment, which I like. Continuing down to the outsole of the shoe, you've got that familiar herringbone foam runner traction pattern. It works very well. It's also very durable. You can wear this shoe for months at a time and you get barely any wear on the outsole. It's it's crazy. I don't know what kind of foam that they use, but it's like some of the softest and most durable foam out there. That's one of the reasons why I love the foam runner. And I mean, all around, the Adidas Yeezy foam runner in the Onyx colorway, if you're a Yeezy foam runner fan, is an absolute cop. This sneaker is awesome. It's got all of the benefits of the Yeezy foam runner. It's incredibly comfortable. It's very easy to clean because it's made of one material. You can just hose it off if you need to. And it also comes in this incredibly clean dark gray or Onyx colorway, which I absolutely love. And it's probably one of the easiest Yeezy foam runners to rock. I mean, don't don't get me wrong, I love earth tone foam runners. I have like four different pairs of brown foam runners, but it is nice to have a black pair, something different. But at this point, I would love to know your thoughts on the Onyx foam runners and whether this is a shoe that you're trying to grab or whether it's a shoe that you could care less about. So make sure to let me know your thoughts either way in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.